Hi, Dr. Amy Killen here. Um, so today I'm here with my good friend, or I guess friends, uh, PRP. And we talk a little bit about Pleather Rich Plasma, what it is. I'm gonna go through with you how to make it. Um, this is meant for medical providers out there. This is not meant for people who are, for some reason, taking their own blood and doing weird things with it. That's not what I'm trying to speak to. Um, but for the physicians and medical providers out there, who are not already doing PRP, or just for patients who want to know like what is my doctor doing when they're doing talking about PRP, I'm going to walk you through um, what it is and one of the systems that I use for it and kind of talk about the things that I use it for. Um, <laughs> that reminds me, uh, a while back I posted a video of myself injecting my own face with PRP and it was meant as, again, kind of a tutorial for uh, providers, medical providers, to see how to do their and how to do patient injections with PRP. And I had so many people, like dozens of people who didn't have any medical training who wrote it and said, I wanna make my own PRP and I wanna inject myself with it. Um, so I would discourage that is the short version of this. Uh, you have to really know how to handle blood products. You have to know about the anatomy of whatever you're injecting. You have to know, you know about uh, side effects and things that could, could go wrong. So don't do this in your garage is the lesson. But for those of you who have an actual medical facility, who want to talk PRP, let's talk about that. So first of all, this is uh, this was blood that I spun down in a centrifuge. Um, I used the um, I used a centrifuge that spun spun it for 10 minutes in a single spin. There are several device, several machines where you have to double spins. This is after a single spin for 10 minutes. And what you can see here, if you look at it closely, is you've got of course the red blood cells on the bottom. You've got the serum on the top, and then right in the middle. I don't know if you can tell, but right in the middle is what's called the buffy coat. And it's like the white blood cells. And there's white blood cells, and in that same area, right in here, is the platelets. Those are where those are concentrating. So that's what we're really aiming at. We're trying to get that little section of the, for me, I like to get the buffy coat as well. So the buffy coat with the platelets, um, is that's, the, that's gonna be your best PRP. So we're gonna be using this. I, I use PRP for all of my, regenerative procedures. So I use it for my facial injections, I use it for my facial microneedling, um, I use it for my hair injections and hair microneedling for hair restoration and just to increase the health of the hair. And then I also use it for all of my sexual injections. So my O-shot and P-shot injections, I use PRP as the base. It has a lot of great growth factors in there, uh, great at increasing um, things like VEGF, increasing blood vessel uh, formation and blood flow to the area. It's gonna activate stem cell recruitment in the area and talk to the stem cells that are already there to try to get them to regenerate that tissue. Um, so there's a lot of growth factors and things in PRP. There's dozens of them if you look it up. Um, but I'm really interested for a lot of my procedures in that increasing blood flow part, increasing the VEGF, increasing the angiogenesis, uh, which I think benefits you know almost every part of the body. Um, I often will combine the PRP with other things like with stem cells or exosomes or amnio, but you can also just use PRP by itself. It's very safe as long as you, as long as you, know, that you know the anatomy of the area you're injecting. Uh, it's one of the safer medical procedures that we can do. Obviously, you only want to put you only want to do this as an autologous procedure. So you take blood from me, you put the PRP back in me, you don't give my PRP to someone else, that would cause problems. Um, so, you know, some common sense stuff. But if you do it right, use common sense. This is very safe. Um, okay, so as far as the, um, the way that we can get this PRP done, you can do what's called a do-it-yourself method, which is when you spin, instead of using these, these fancy um, containers to spin it, you actually spin it in like yellow tops. Um, this is not probably the best way to do it, but a lot of people when they're first making PRP, they do that where essentially you spin it in a yellow top and then you get a long uh, blunt tipped needle, uh, for lack of a better word, and you essentially just go in just to this area right here and you pull off just that fluid and buffy coat. It is operator dependent, which means that if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably not making very good PRP. You want the PRP for my procedures at least to be about six to eight times whole blood concentration. So we're talking about about a million platelets um, versus in blood is you know 200,000 or so per um, whatever unit they're using, I don't even know. But it's basically six to eight times is what's the best 
quality PRP. Um, it's been shown with, at least with skin and hair, if you get too concentrated of PRP, so maybe you're 12 times um, whole blood concentration, then you actually have, um, the, the, the effects are actually worse than if you're in that sweet spot of six to eight times. So that's my goal, is to get that six to eight times. So with this device, this is an Excel PRP kit, um, and I don't work for them, but I do like their system. Um, I'm basically gonna put the, put the, um, the thing up on this little machine here. And this is, allows me kind of a nice way to be able to figure out how much PRP that I want to make. So for some procedures, for instance, I'm gonna need, like maybe I want four milliliters of PRP so I can make it more concentrated. Uh, but for average procedures, I'm gonna do seven or eight milliliters of PRP from this 55 ml blood draw and then 5 ml ACD solution. So the, this before it was separated was 60 ml total volume, 55 came from blood. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull off my platelet pour plasma. So to do that, I'm just gonna put a syringe on here I'm gonna, um, and I'm going to turn this little dial. And as you can see, it is like magic. It's pulling off the top layer there and I'm gonna dial it up until I basically pulled off everything except for about seven mLs. And this is measured. So right here it says, you know, six or eight, and I'm right in there. So that last little bit, that last six or eight mLs is gonna be my PRP. I'm gonna do this again. This time, basically just pulling off that last little bit and the buffy coat. So for my procedures, a little bit of blood is okay, and I might get some. Some procedures you don't want to have blood, um, or not very much, but if you can look at that, you see how there's, there's a little blood in there, but there's also um, white blood cells. The white blood cells, the platelets are kind of all adhering to each other. Um, I, that's going to be your PRP when it all mixes up. So that's how it's done. It's super easy to do, and I'll do this for both of these syringes that I have. Once I have my PRP, then I can use it to inject different things. So again, skin, um, certainly if you do joint injections, you can inject with joints. Um, you want to, these are all clean procedures, the things that I do, so I have um, gloves, but I don't need to be sterile necessarily. Um, once I have my PRP, which you want to be either um, kind of a dark, clear color like this, or a little bit pink, but not red red, then, um, then you're ready to go, and it's pretty easy. So that is the end of my little PRP tutorial. Um, if you have questions, put them below on the channel. And as long as you are not in your garage trying to do this <laughs> to yourself and your random neighborhood neighbors, then I will try to answer them. <laughs> have a good day, thanks.